Hi students, welcome to Marketing 3336. I'm gonna be covering uh, chapter 15 today from Principles of Marketing, Kotler and Armstrong. The topic is advertising and public relations. Uh, this is a particularly interesting chapter. It follows on from our last discussion of interactive marketing communications. Remember that advertising and PR are part of our marketing mix variables or marketing mix concepts and a couple of the instrumental ways in which we communicate the effectiveness of our product or information about our product into the marketplace. So let's first talk about advertising in general. Advertising is any paid form of non-personal presentation and promotion of ideas, goods, or services by an identified sponsor. A couple of key terms in here, non-personal presentation, meaning that it is not being customized and delivered by a human being uh, for each individual. So it's not a customized, it's non-personal, uh, meaning that it's a general uh, form of communication. So just like an ad that you would see on a TV ad, for example, or a newspaper ad or anything, it's, it's simply just uh, out there and it's not tailored to any one individual. It also promotes an idea, a uh, good or a service. And the final thing is it's by an identified sponsor. You really know who it is who's made this advertisement. So this is a, this is a core uh, definition of advertising. Now, when we think about advertising, there are really three factors that we want to consider when we're thinking about budget and selection of ads. The first is the stage in the product life cycle. We've actually talked about this in previous classes. And this is, this is when we've talked about the entry stage all the way to the maturity stage uh, in the product life cycle. So if we think about where a product stands in the stage of the life cycle, it's very important because it helps us select the type of advertising and the amount that we want to spend on that advertising. You can imagine that a very mature product in the, in the cycle, the spend would be different than a very brand new product that we're trying to introduce. And the style of advertising would actually be quite different as well. Market share. The amount of market that we own. Do we own a lot of the market or just a little? If we own a lot of the market, that really could tell us the type of ads we want to do. So we don't want to spend as much time explaining about our product. We want to spend more time actually just reminding people of how excellent the product is. Or if we have a small share, we might want to actually consider really doing a lot more to persuade people to build on that share of that product. And then lastly, competition. Is it an intense competition or limited competition? That could tell us whether we want comparative elements to our ads, as well as the amount of budget that we need, depending on how our competition is advertising as well in the marketplace. So there are three types of, uh, of setting uh, advertising objectives. There's three really types of ads that are out there. The first is what we call an informative ad. The second is persuasive, and the last is reminder. So an informative ad is used when you're introducing a new product category to build what we call primary demand. So you've introduced this product or you've introduced this area and you really want to build demand and people to think about buying this product or buy this, uh, buy this category of products. Persuasive advertising is used when you want to, it, there's increased competition or selective demand out there and we want to be able to persuade people that we are the best product in the marketplace and give them reasons to purchase our product. And lastly, reminder advertising is really used for mature products to be able to help maintain the relationships with customers and keep people thinking about these products. We're going to see one of each of these types of ads and get a flavor for what these ads are like and how people use them uh, to be able to advertise and companies use them to be able to advertise and deliver message about their product. The first, let's look at an informative ad. This is for the uh, PS5 launch, uh, and it's PS5, uh, uh, it, it's the advertisement is called the No Limits ad. Uh, it's an award-winning ad. All three of these are very award-winning ads. And remember, this is really for new products, explaining how it works. It, it really gets out there some information a, a little bit about motivating people to think about purchasing this product. There's various forms of reasons that we would use this, anywhere from describing the product to just getting people excited about the product. So let's look at the uh, PlayStation 5 uh, launch ad. Exploration. It's in our DNA. There's something inside each and every one of us that compels us to know the unknown. 
push past every frontier. We want to see what's never been seen. Hear what's never been heard. Feel what's never been felt. There are no limits to where we'll go. To what we'll discover. To what we'll achieve. We are all explorers. And there are new worlds to explore. So this is an ad for a PS5. PlayStation. Let's now look uh, next at, uh, at persuasive advertising. So remember, a persuasive ad is where we want to build a brand preference. We might encourage people to switch. We create a consumer engagement for the product. And so this one here is really about getting consumers engaged in an already existing product that's heavy in the marketplace. You have Gatorade, Powerade, a lot of major competitors in the, in the marketplace. And what we want to do is persuade people that, uh, that uh, Powerade is right for them tie it to a celebrity possibly. So let's look at this as an example. This is the Just a Kid Rose from Concrete, another award-winning ad. You see, you wouldn't ask why the rose that grew from the concrete had damaged petals. On the contrary, we would all celebrate its tenacity. We would all love its will to reach the sun. Well, we are the roses. This is the concrete. These are my damaged petals. Don't ask me why. Ask me how. So this is an example of a persuasive ad that really builds brand community, engages the customer. So it, it really uh, it, it it won a number of awards for the use of that ad. Let's look at next. Uh, let's look at next another ad. Um, this is what we call a reminder ad. This is where we have a mature product typically, we're maintaining relationships, we're keeping people's mind out about the importance of this product and the, the value that this product has really brought to the marketplace. So in this case, we're gonna talk about Volvo, very famous for its safety concerns and uh, its ability to deliver safety value to the marketplace. So this is, this is an ad that won an award called 60 Years of the Seatbelt by Volvo. So you notice all the product placements of the Volvo, anywhere from the tractors to the cars, to the selection and focus on safety. And this is an example of a reminder ad. So when we're thinking about advertising, we're, a couple of the key things that we think about when we're designing our ad campaigns uh, is reach, frequency, impact, and engagement. Let's talk about each of those really quickly. Reach is, a, and this is when we're gonna look at the impact of our campaign. How, how, it, how effective is our campaign? 
where each is first is a measure of the percentage of people at a target market. Remember, we talk about we define our target market that are exposed to a campaign in a given period. Is it 10% of our market, 20, 100%? Obviously, we'd like our reach to be as high as possible. Frequency is a measure of how many times the average person gets in the target market is exposed to this, this, uh, this ad. Are they exposed once, 10 times? What's the frequency? Uh, impact is, is a qualitative value of a message given uh, through the medium. So it's like, how impactful is the message? That's a little bit more difficult to measure. It's not as quantitatively a measure, so it's usually judged. And then lastly, engagement is a measure of things like such as ratings, readership, listenership, click-through rates. What a click-through rate is, for example, is if I'm watching an ad online and I decide to click through and find out more information about that product. Sometimes you might have, like, for example, seen an ad for uh, insurance and then click through and find out more about that insurance product or a new product. Those are called click-through rates. So how many times do people click through to actually see the product when they see the advertisement? So these are a few areas that we look at for metricing the uh, advertising. We have to remember that one of the biggest issues today is what we call advertising clutter. Uh, so with all of the internet capability and all the ad mechanisms, both uh, through, through your, uh, your phones, through your, uh, your computer, through your television, through paper, all the different mechanisms that you can get advertising today, we are actually facing a big issue of advertising clutter. And the challenge with that is, is getting past this. People just get, want to break through advertising and get it over with. And that's why there's been an issue, for example, with DVRs or recording devices and stuff where people just go past, um, uh, past movies or fast forward through advertisements. And that's why you're starting to see more companies putting uh, restrictions on content that forces you to watch ads. And so they're doing that simply because they know that people have been overwhelmed with advertising clutter. So they're trying to figure out ways to actually get people to see the ads rather than push through uh, and push through the clutter. So the next section we'll talk about briefly is public relations. I really want you to focus on advertising. It's good to understand public relations though too. That's an important, uh, important lever. It involves building good relations with the company's various publics and obtaining favorable publicity. So building up good corporate image, heading off unfavorable rumors, stories, and events. So there's usually a public relations department at any major company, and their job is to go out and be able to get messages out on television, broadcasting, newspapers, put out press releases, try to get information out that's positive about things happening about their product, and if something negative happens, they're trying to stop that negative transfer of information by providing qualifying information and other information to be able to minimize the impact of that in the marketplace. So uh, what are some of the public relation uh, mechanisms? We have press relations or press agencies that drive this through. We have product publicity teams that actually go out and, and do product publicity about it. And then we usually have what we call a public affairs. This involves building and maintaining national or local community relations. So in press relations, we're actually working with the press to get information out there about our product. Product publicity is where we're actually going out there and trying to get specific placements or instances of our product out there in the, uh, out, out there in the community to get them interested in it. And then public affairs is working with national or local community relations or organizations to be able to get them to be positive on our product. We also have lobbying. So we, uh, we, this involves going to regulatory agencies and the government to be able to make sure that regulatory policies and elements are positively favored on our product. There are so many companies that spend tremendous amounts of money to work with the uh, federal government to make sure that they minimize regulations. So the oil and gas industry, for example, spends a tremendous amount of money working on the government to minimize regulations on oil and gas. Another example uh, uh, is, uh, is the alcohol or beverage industry of trying to get to maintain their status of, of making things legal in the marketplace. So these are examples of uh, lobbying efforts that go out there to work with government agencies to make sure that they get positive uh, access and rights to be able to sell products. 
Next is investor relations. So people who invest in public companies through the stock market, shareholders, the financial community, we want to send out information to them about new product launches, information about status of our company, things of that nature that get them excited about it and continue positive images uh, on the investment of our, in our company. And then lastly, development. And this involves public relations with donors or members of uh, not-for-profit organizations to gain financial and volunteer support uh, to, to back our product in, in the marketplace. So one of the reasons that we do public relations is the costs tend to be much lower than advertising. In fact, we get that information out there. There's actually no cost to it except for our PR people's efforts that, are, that they bring out there. So if they can actually get a good PR release, that can actually have a nice impact and it costs very little for our firm. It often has a stronger impact on public awareness than advertising because independent sources pick up this information and share it out there in the marketplace, which gets really positive awareness and there's a lot of people that get the information. It has the power to engage customers and make them part of a brand story because you're sort of orchestrating the story out in the marketplace about our product, about everything about it. So you really, as a, a PR person, are the person just managing the image of the product in the marketplace. So these are a few of our major media sources and media tools that people use in PR, ranging from news to speeches to, to uh, PR, uh, public service activities. You can see this list. But these are examples of what's used out there in the market. So I'd like you to become familiar with this a little bit and, uh, and, and, and get to know a little bit about advertising and public relations. Anyway, I hope you uh, uh, have had a good week so far and uh, doing well in the class. Take care.